everybody that I clash with is a heavy hitter. Like, I don't I don't beef with dudes that soft. I ain't know I'm finna get attacked on Queen Flip. I'm thinking it's love. Peace. Well, I want to welcome y'all to another episode of For the Culture. Now we got two of the most, I'm gonna say, controversial brothers on the on on YouTube and social media right now. We got the homie Charles the White in the house, and we got the brother Hassan Campbell in the building. Now, fellas, do me a favor. Give um, explain, introduce yourself in a little bit more detail for the people of your mind. Hassan, we'll start with you. Well, I mean, everybody already know who I am. Some love me, some hate me. You know, for being who I am, similar to the brother Charleston, we both use our voice and don't really, really care about what the people think about what we feel or what we have to say. Uh, but, man, this is Charleston White, man, uh, by way of Fort Worth, Texas, uh, community active. How long you been in the community activist business, my brother, if you don't mind me uh, asking? Ten, uh, ten years, man. May, may, may or make ten years this year. Okay. Now, you both are having a lot of success on YouTube and Instagram. Now, how do you feel about the fame you've acquired and the influence that you both got, that you guys have? We'll start with um, Charleston. Uh, man, I, I had the influence long before Instagram and YouTube. Uh, I had the fame long before Instagram and YouTube. I was on the front page of the paper for killing the white man as a kid. Me and my niggas over a starter jacket. Uh, after that, even when I got out the juvenile facility, uh, all the major news outlets, even the walls of concrete, uh, news media school have run written news articles and journals. So uh, this internet shit is for fun now, homie. So uh, I do that shit for a character to get money uh, and try to play on the movie industry to get me a movie deal. Now, hi, same question. I mean, it's, <laughs> at the end of the day, man, like 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 Charleston said, man, my name was flying high before the internet. Actually, the internet watered, watered me down. I'm I'm a street dude from Bronx River, but once I got on the internet, I'm 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 the blogger now, you know? I'm the blogger, the blogger. <laughs> okay, now 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 Charleston, you said that it's the character, you know, you you working you you work you trying to get a movie deal and all that. Yeah, I'm so, pimping, so, homie. I, I took pimping to another level. Uh okay. I saw I saw the movie Dolomite and I saw what Rudy Ray Moe did with the character Dolomite. And so I took that movie, uh I brought that movie idea and concept to Facebook, and uh, out of the out of the work that I did in, the, in in the community, I created like a Dolomite character, calling women bitches and hoes and fuck ass niggas, you dumb stupid motherfuckers. And so I went and, and I went and studied some street characters, you know, that I know in the community, man. Uh, one an uh, old nigga, and so I took the traits of the old nigga and and, and the bootleg man, Big Troy, and I put him into this character. Uh, and that's what I brought to social media, homie, with the pimping and the and the and the macking and the slack jacking. And so, uh, yeah, I'm just pimping and playing on everybody now. Some of the things that we've heard in the past or, or recently, we're saying, that, are we separating that from who you are? That's just uh, the character that you're uh, well, portraying. I'm I'm not a father on the internet. Uh, I'm not a community activist on the internet. Uh, I'm a shit talking nigga that's kicking pimping and and and, and high side real good. Uh, that's my anytime I'm on the internet, I'm in character, homie. That's that's game I'm putting down. Everybody else is on the internet socializing. I'm a game related nigga, so I see a, I see a billion people in one place, and I get to play on their mind, right? So I didn't know people were so emotional on there. So once I see that they give me their feelings, then I got I got their mind and their emotions, homie. So I don't, I can't lose. So I come to wake up every day and to rattle minds and emotions on the internet. And by way of it turning the views and those views turn into a monetary game. And once those views get big enough, the people from the industry and, 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 and movie people start looking and saying, hey, hey, I think he'll fit good for this role. So like, I'm on the Internet playing for something. Homie. Now, let's change the tone a little bit. I'm going to ask you guys something about some politics real quick. Now, can you tell us, do you consider yourself a, a Republican, a Democratic or an independent? And that's questions for both of you guys. Oh, uh, man, I'm an ignorant nigga playing smart. And because I live in a, in a Republican state and, and the Democrats have no power, since I'm an ignorant nigga playing smart and I like playing con, I like pimping, uh, nigga, uh, I'm a conservative nigga who just so happened to vote Republicans because that's who power, that's who's in power. If the Democrats was in power, I vote Democrat. If the Asian was in power, I vote Asian. Whoever I got to play on in power, that's what I become. 
Same question for you, Hassan. For me, I feel like I'm a um, I'm a revolutionary. I'm a runaway slave. I realize that America is still a plantation. We on a plantation, so I'm a runaway slave, a revolutionary. That's that's how I feel. Now, for close to four years, Donald Trump claimed that he did more for Black Americans than any president since Abraham Lincoln. In your opinion, was Trump was a, did he do more for Blacks, or you, or you think he was capping, or what's your stance on that on that statement? Donald Trump had people in the hood walking around with sixteen thousand dollars stimulus checks in their pockets. The hood, the hood has never seen as much money as it legal money as it's ever seen under no other president outside of Donald Trump. Yeah, I was just about to say that, homie. The way they the the, the game that they played with us, how he made them lower the standards of the SBA, the PPP loan. Say, man, it was niggas. He made we ain't never in our life, homie. We ain't never in our life been able to have that much access to a bank loans, PPP loans, being able to scam with unemployment. And nah, homie, we ain't never been able to do that, homie. And, and that wasn't by coincidence. That wasn't by chance. He pretty much opened up a door for the first time. Black people number one complaint was is that we can't get a loan for businesses, but we can get a loan for cars. You got dudes that's hitting me up. Telling me, yo, can I help you get a business loan? You know, we get you a hundred thousand. I'll take fifty. You take fifty. Like, nigga, I wish I would let you fill out an application for me, where you get fifty percent of some shit that I gotta pay back. Yeah, the hood is eating. And the black folks, eating. black folks was, hey homie, we ate like a motherfucker, homie. We came in. I'm talking about, hey man, niggas, niggas went to making songs about PPP money and, and how millions of dollars, homie, flowed through the ghetto. Some households got hundreds of thousands. One person might got 20,000. The next man, one household. Man, we had an opportunity up under this president. So my question essentially was, do y'all think Trump, um, when the, the statement that he made about being the best president since Abraham Lincoln, so y'all agree with that, more or less? Because, of the, because was, of the stimulus thing and all not that. Not only was he the best president, but he was the best ally that black people could have ever had. And because we let these coon ass celebrities you know, play us out of position and, and, and go for, you know, like, 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 like with, with Tamika Mallory and, and them, right? They, they, they went hard and all the celebrities went hard to get Biden in. And as soon as Biden got in, they said, oh, he's not answering our call. So he's no good no more. This is the game right here that's being played. With man, the, Trump is the first time in our history, man, that we've never seen a non politician run America. And he ran America unorthodox, non traditional. How can the whole world be against one person? In all of our lives, all of our lives, man, we was conditioned and made to idolize him, to sing his name and, and, and honor in retrospect, right? So all of a sudden, he's racist. And, and we can, man, we was tricked to believe that he wasn't racist at first. So now all of a sudden he's racist and we just supposed to trust that he's racist. So was he the best president? He's the best I've ever seen. So that's the first man's man's president that a common man can relate to in his actions. Could nobody tell him nothing? He didn't have an advisor advising him. So, man, I think that's the best we'll see in our lifetime. Then you got to keep it. You got to look at the fact that when you're dealing with Donald Trump, man, anytime the news hates him and the politicians hate him, there's never been a politician that's been, you know, pretty much on on. on for black people like that. It's rarely do you find politicians that's really going for black people or the news. So when you got everybody white damn near that's in power hating this man, you got to love him. You got to ask yourself a question. Are you part of the machine or are you the people? If the machine yeah, hate him, we're supposed to love him. Now, look, my next question is for both of y'all, right? Now, Lil Wayne and Kodak Black and Desiree Perez, you know, Trump pardoned all three of them, amongst others. Do y'all think that it was some people that deserve to be pardoned way before those people received theirs? Like people like um, Matula Shakur, Mumia Abu Jamal. Mumia Abu, yes, yes. You know what I mean? Guys yeah. like that, those revolutionary types. How do you feel? And what's your, Larry Hoover. What's your, Larry Hoover. You know what I mean? Um, Jeff Ford, we could go on and on for a, a lot of guys that has been in prison for a long time. But um, how do y'all feel about these celebrities and, you know, Desiree Perez and Lil Wayne and, and Kodak Black receiving pardons? What's, what's your stance on that? I feel like the black community, uh, that, 
we 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 pretty much committed suicide. We we committed suicide. It's like the state of the the state of Black America is on life support because we had the opportunity from a president to actually grant us, you know, clemency for the for 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 for, for our leaders who actually fought and bled for us to be able to be where we at right now. And they decide to get this, the junkie Little Wayne. He's a junkie. He does not want to do nothing but kiss baby and get high. Then you got Desiree Perez, this chick running around selling drugs and decide to take down two cartels. It's like, and then her Kodak Black, Mr. I bit a girl up after I raped her, allegedly, because I don't know for sure that he did it, but the evidence is not looking good. It's like, this is what we free? The people that deserve to be here is going to die in jail. The people that put their life on the line for us to be able to, to do what we're doing right now was captured and kidnapped to put it to the penitentiary system and they let these ignorant niggas go to keep us entertained. And the reason for that is because they spend billions of dollars to keep us done. Dumb, 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 dumb down while they sit up there and they make laws to put us back in prison. Johnson, what's your opinion on that, my brother? Uh, man, the only reason they got out, it wasn't that President Trump, as he was pardoning people, said, hey, let me let Kodak Black out. Or, hey, let me pardon Lil Wayne. They had people advocating uh, on their behalf and petitioning uh, people who could get to Donald Trump and say, hey, man, can you do this for us? Uh, remember, so what happened is uh, we don't have nobody advocating for these other brothers. There's nobody from the from the black caucus. There's nobody from uh, uh, there's nobody from the black Democratic Party. There's nobody uh, from the black hip hop community that's advocating for 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 Larry Hoover. Uh, they're not petitioning the government, saying, "Hey, what about this guy, man? These these guys been in. If nothing else, let's get them out of super super sick." Uh, Snoop Dogg petitioned President Trump on behalf of Harry O. So they had they had people advocating for them. So that's the difference. Who's advocating for our revolutionary soldiers? Not the hip hop community. Man, if Jay-Z and them went to talking and 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 whoever these big names, Tyler Perry and them, if they went to advocating and petitioning our government, it's not that we're not doing it, it's who's advocating. Who's saying that the law is wrong? That's what matters to the white boy. When Kim Kardashian saying it's wrong, then it's wrong. But if Charleston White and her son say it, then ah, uh, so they're not advocating and pushing the envelope home for these people to 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 be free. I do think that um Kanye West and Kim Kardashian was campaigning to try to get Larry Hoover free. I don't obviously they wasn't successful. But I did know that um, I read a couple of places where they were advocating for his freedom. And you know what they're doing now? Now they're trying to bring Larry Hoover up on charges, federal charges, new charges, basically saying that he he appointed some some guys to be on like in a high position of of of, of the gang, and they're trying to bring him up on new charges. And this is because they don't want him to get out. So they're crossing the T's and dotting the I's now. They don't want that man to get out because he's still. You know, Larry Hoover still hold power. And see, a dude like a dude like Larry Hoover is the most dangerous dude that you could possibly let back out into the streets because this dude, he recognizes now who the real enemy is. And with the power that he has, he can wake up a lot of these young brothers and, and, and make moves in these streets. Like the, 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 the city of Chicago and everywhere in black America is in turmoil. Black is like our babies is killing babies at a high speed and they claiming demon time. You see what I'm saying? Back in the days when I was growing up, we had praying mothers praying over us. These little niggas now, every time you turn around, you hearing stories about these young boys killing their parents. There's a frequency being thrown out there yeah. that got that got the hood and turmoil you. So we need we need more dudes yeah, out there like that. We've all seen examples of guys that do a lot of time in jail, guys that was influential on the streets. The streets don't love you. I would hate to see Larry Hoover come home from prison and wind up getting harmed physically by a 17 or 18 year old trying to make a name for himself.
because the streets don't love you. You understand what I'm saying? Of course, I don't want to see nobody in prison. I would like to see him come home, go, grow old, enjoy the rest of his life, and stay away from Chicago and, and, and love it from a distance. Because we've seen an example. We've seen what happened to with Willie Lloyd. We've seen what happened to guys that go to prison with those big names, and they come home way older than they were when they was on the streets and still wind up becoming a victim. So I would hate to well, see they, they, like that, you know? They, they uh they they come home and enforcing old codes, but when 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 you come home repairing children, uh I've learned over my last ten years of working in the streets, homie, and, and disrespecting niggas in the streets at times, right? And in conflicts, uh the the streets love those that repair the children. Nigga, I get passes uh because I work with children, so I, I found a solution to get love from the streets. Nigga, repair the children. The old can't come home trying to enforce law on the young when there's a disconnect, right? So a lot of what you see, my problem is on the internet, homie, is a nigga saying something to me. And I ain't never had no man say nothing to me. So when a nigga get on here saying something to me, nigga, I resent that. I ain't, can't no nigga tell me nothing. Nigga, mama and them can tell me something. Grandmama and them can tell me something. But can't no man, can't no man tell me nothing. That even that even includes the janitor. As harmless as the janitor is at school, nigga. As as harmless as the janitor is sweeping trash up at school. If I drop trash on the in the hallway and he say, say, brother, can you pick that up? Fuck you. Cause he I resent a man. Cause I ain't never had no man saying nothing to me. So I don't even know how to respond to no man saying nothing other than resenting it. I hear what you're saying about, you know, you having resentment for men and growing up in the house with a woman and, and, and growing up under that, you know, um, tutelage. But as a man growing up, you understand that in life, you can learn from anyone. And those is that is something that you're working on within yourself to get better at? Or that's how you feel and you and, and, and you just want to stand on that? Or, or, or you're a work in progress like everybody else, more or less? Oh uh, no, nah, I ain't I ain't no work in progress. Uh I take I take the Qaddafi method. Uh my life is much easier surrounding myself around women, ladies, bitches, and hoes. Yeah, I noticed I noticed from 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 1998 to now going to go visit guys in prison. Uh I noticed the backbone of a man. It's a woman, it's not another man. I know every I know every great man had a woman to lean on. It wasn't his brother. Uh, so now, nah, man, uh, I find my strength in, in the woman, and, and I realize that at, at this point in, in, in our society, uh, man, I, I ain't never seen two niggas work together and do nothing it isn't in our communities. I seen the woman build. I seen the woman take care of. So uh, I sow into the woman. Uh, I don't want to hear nothing from no man. Hosh, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna comment on that before we move on to the next question? What was the question again? Say that again. Well, my, my thing, my, what I was asking him about was being pardoned and stuff, but we kind of went on into speaking about Larry Hoover and guys that deserve to be pardoned. And then um, we kind of spilled off into some of his personal um, personal beliefs about, you know, about um, having resentment for a male. Well, I have replied, I have responded to the, to the, you know, when the when Willie Lloyd came home and the young niggas. But yeah, I, I was I was responding to the uh, you know you say the old school came home from Chicago and the young nigga murked him. So you you know you you know Larry Hoover coming home and I'm saying uh, when you come home and try to enforce the old law on the young niggas, they resent that, right? You ain't been there, ain't no granddaddy been there, ain't no uncle been there. So most of the old G niggas like Willie Lloyd, nigga, when they come home and they see shit fucked up. They go to talking about, man, it used to be like this. We taking it back to that. So I was replying saying, yeah, man, that's because they coming home forcing the old law without building the relationship and establishing the connection because the young nigga naturally resents the old nigga. Hosh, you want to you wanna, you wanna, um, add on to that before you move on? See, the thing is, we living in the day and the time now where still sharp and still. I agree with the brother, you know, Behind every strong um, man is a strong black woman. But at the same time, still sharp and still. And it's like out here, you can't save everybody. So you have to lead by an example. If Larry Hoover was to come home today in today's time, 
he got to grab strong brothers that's like minded like him and move in silent. You know, you got to you got to do more and say less, because when these young boys out here, they see and they start to recognize that, you know, that you really, really about what you say you about. And you're not even really saying it, but you're showing it and you live in it. That's how you live. We, we live in the days of the, well, we don't even realize it, but these are the days of the under the underground railroad. We just don't realize it. There's cameras everywhere to watch you for a reason. There's, there's audio and, and, and video being recorded everywhere you go to watch you for a reason. When you go to the supermarket and you swipe your rewards card, they, they keep in track on how much food you get. So you got to do more and say less out here because once you start making an impact on the hood and you really, really start, you know, Changing the see what well, people got to understand. Most of the part, the places where black people was at, there's energy points, strong energy points. So they could they control that energy and make the energy ignorant. That's why these young boys are saying they on demon time. So when we start sitting up there, start elevating and waking these young boys up and lighting them, they are gonna come out of the darkness and move to the light. But then when you start doing that, you make yourself a target. So you got to be very careful. Because every, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like what, 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 what um, Jagger Hoover said. He said that the next time black people have a messiah, we're going to create them. Now, when you sit back and you look at what's going on in the world today, we don't have strong black leaders. We got rappers like my song coming out there, picking and choosing his battles. A little kid gets shot, you know, a day after his graduation. Black Lives Matter is nowhere to be found. Hi, so hi. Haas, hold up, Haas. My son, I saw a video today, just because you brought my son up. Of Charles, I'm not sure if you're familiar with my son, but he's no, not here to defend himself. And he did make some, he, he does some stuff, man, that I, I, I respect. I respect that he does. I know you and him got a riff. So we, let's do that another time. You know what I mean? If you don't mind. No, actually, no, actually it's, it's not. See, it's not even about, I'm just using him and others for an example. It's not a riff. It's the fact that Understand this, right? When yeah, but you, you know, some people like, nah, I can sit here and play off of that. I can sit here and play off of that. Let me finish. Let me let me, let, let, me, let me finish, right? Nah, when, you, when, 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 when you when you about your people, right? Because what, what we what we have to do is be real. We can't be fake and we can't be phony. When you a revolutionary, right? The government don't sponsor you. You see what I'm saying? The government ain't never paid for Malcolm X to be in a hotel somewhere fighting for his people. Once the government is sponsoring, paying for your plane tickets, for you to protest, they paying for your hotels, for you to protest, and they sponsoring you, you're not a revolutionary no more. You're a guinea pig. So that brings me back to what Jag Hoover said. The next time you have a messiah, we're going to create them. Now, we got all types of stuff going on, you know, in, in the black community. There is no black voices no more except for the people on YouTube or the celebrities. So now when the pandemic comes out, you hit you'll see Puffy jump and stick his head out there when he ain't chasing when he ain't chasing on um, fabulous around drink champs trying to own um, party with him because he really want to party with him. You see what I'm saying? These dudes come out when they're told to. Now, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. I feel like my bad, man. <laughs> I should <sure> buck out. <laughs> yeah, so look, look, next question, man. Now, y'all know, look, what's your thoughts on Colin Kaepernick? Now, not to go back, way back to Colin Kaepernick, but both of you guys got opinions on Cap. So what's your thoughts on Kaepernick? And do you think that he was unjustly vilified by the, by the Republican Party by the, for the way that he protested? And I ask this question because Cap protested in a peaceful manner compared to the, to the way that those Trump supporters and so on and so on, the way they stormed the, the Capitol how they vilified him for months and months and months. And it's almost like you didn't even hear nothing about the Capitol no more. Man, did, did, did the niggas ever boycott the NFL? Did black people ever boycott the NFL? They never boycotted the NFL. I remember one year they were saying, we go boycott the NFL. Did black people ever boycott the NFL? No, uh, no, they didn't. Uh, Colin Kaepernick didn't ever do no motherfucking protest. That kneeling shit. He did. We didn't. We don't send no nigga uh, to run the football to go up there to protest. Nigga run the football. Throw the football. Niggas let us do the protesting. And peaceful protesting ain't never done nothing. You fucked off your football career. Then 
Nike give y'all all the money in the world. Nigga, you ain't done nothing for us. So no, I ain't never liked the nigga. I ain't never been a fan of no or no or no nigga like him. He don't know our struggle. He don't know what mama and mother and them had to go through, man. So he ain't done nothing for us. Okay, uh, same, same question, Hans. Colin Kaepernick to me was nothing but a distraction. He was he was he 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 he, he was a distraction to put us there to keep us in a frenzy, to keep us dumbed down uh, uh, about the laws that's being passed. He ain't no different from that shit that they had everybody doing in America when everybody was chasing Pokemon. Remember that? Oh. <laughs> everybody was chasing Pokemon. That's all that nigga was. He was nothing but a distraction you know, to, keep, to, 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 to keep us away from what's really, really going on. And that's it. And that's what these yeah. celebrities are. Everybody, everything and everybody right now is a distraction to keep you entertained and to keep you away from the laws that's being passed that that's being passed that's taking away your constitutional right right now. Every day yeah, that man, we homie, yeah, that's that's no different than them putting Black Lives Matter on the basketball court, homie. That don't help us. The that don't the, uh, the NBA players holding up the hand saying I can't breathe, homie. That don't help us. Boots on the ground grassroots organization, people who are out here on the front line actually working with the people, they don't help us, huh? They don't make sure that we, we're equipped with their star power to advance our platform and our work that we do. They never go to the boots on the ground, the grassroots people in the community. Those people are neglected from funding to support. Uh, no, nah, homie, so when 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 the homie Hassan say uh, when they give you and they they allow you to use their platform, you're not ours anymore. The revolution will not be funded, but it's gonna be televised. They're gonna let us see it, but they're not gonna fund it. So if you're getting funding, whether that's grant funding or corporate sponsorships, homie, and they find out you taking that money to go stockpile weapons for you and black folk, you think they're gonna keep giving you money? So when that brother say revolutionary, you can't play sports and roll that off your tongue. You can't have a podcast and roll that off your tongue. Notice I didn't, I normally, I'm, I'm a, I got a revolutionary spirit, but I done stepped into the entertainment industry, right? They didn't give me a podcast. I can't revolutionary now. Now I got to find another game to play for the people. They I, ain't, I ain't front line no more. So I got to find another game to play for the people. It, it sounds harsh. It sounds like he's attacking. But homie, sometimes the truth sounds like you're attacking something. The truth tears down. It has to. So it can get to the foundation of things. And that's well, all the homie's saying. That's why, you know, I, why I, oh, I tell people all the time, man, what do you want? You want the ugly truth or you want a beautiful lie? If you sit up there and you really, really believe that these demons that's in power are going to let black people spray paint Black Lives Matter in the middle of Midtown, downtown Manhattan, and they're going to have some black bitch down there with red, white, and blue shorts on twerking, you sitting up there, you twerking your ass on Black Lives Matter. So now Black Lives Matter became a twerk contest? Like, when the... I, I've never... I've never in my life seeing such an embarrassment. It's like you don't went to sleep and woke up to a nightmare. This shit is a bad dream that's going on. It's a game being played. When we promoted this live, a lot of people assumed that I was going to bring you brothers here to clash, to clash you brothers. You know what I mean? To try to play off of everything that's been going on in the internet, all the, all the, all the, the rave that's been, all the buzz that Charleston has, all the buzz that Hassan has and General Charleston, the statements about the East, the South and the East and all that. You know, being an internet motherfucker, I could have came in and we could have tried to play it like that for that. But that's that in our angle, man. We want to get to know who you are as a man and, and, and see what level of intelligence you're dealing with. Let, let me, so that's let me why say we, this, homie. Okay. I, I did that because that's the elephant in the room. Nigga, the East don't work with the South. The West don't work with the North. We all we all segregated. We're all separated, right? So there are some sentiments that we have amongst each other, being from these sides of America, that we try to play like it's not there, right? So 
this was a good conversation starter, right? I go to New York, bright eyed and bushy tail. Nigga ain't never been to New York before. Nigga, I'm country boy. Bright eyed and bushy tail. All my people saying, hey, don't go. How they book you don't seem right, right? How they book you. Now, these guys been doing this entertainment shit for a while. I'm new to this shit. I'm so new, I go by myself. So when I get there, I'm happy, bright eyed and bushy tail. Nigga, I'm in New York City. I'm happy in the motherfucker. So when I get ambushed and I see, oh, homie, these niggas been on some fuck shit from the start. So the sentiments change. Nigga, my people watching that shit too. The people down south, nigga, I got a big following down south. Okay, not to cut you off, Charles. Look now, being that you already you led us into this, um, you both have been guests on the Queens Flip Show. I seen you on there, Charles. And, um, Hassan, I think I seen you on it twice, maybe three times. I'm not sure. Now you both have had issues with Flip. Now, Charles, being well, that you said I, it, I, I, what's, I, what's I, your I, I didn't have no issues with him. I didn't know nothing. I came blind. Okay. I, ne- I didn't even know. I didn't even know what podcast I was gonna be. I didn't even know the name of the podcast. I mean, when I got off the plane, I didn't even know the name of the pod. My people saying, "Hey, well, who gonna pick you up?" Uh, shit, I don't know. Well, what hotel you gonna stay at? I don't know. I ain't had no problem with him. I only, homie. I think I'm coming because y'all they love. I'm thinking they invite me because they love me. I ain't know I'm finna get attacked on Queen Flip. I'm thinking it's love. So I'm I'm happy. So when I get there and I get attacked, oh no, nigga, this nigga got me up here to try to embarrass me. This nigga got me up here, homie, to try now, to. What do you what do you feel that you was attacked? What would you feel? What was what did he say? What what well if you if you don't mind, you know I me mean, sharing it oh, and just oh, let us know it, what it, happened. It, 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 was, it was different little shit that he was saying in the beginning before the show got started. Oh man, let's not get too cordial now. Uh, you might not like me. You know, kind of. I'm saying, well, God damn, why would that nigga say that? Uh, y'all watch the show. Slow, like slick, indirect shit, more or less. Yeah, that what let, you're let, let, let let me know. Say, yeah, nigga, you might not like me after I handle you. Now this ain't so, no yeah. shade or nothing. I'm just trying to get yeah, an understanding so, of what was going so, on and get the people so, to understand it. So, as you see in the show, homie, so the nigga like, well, yeah, yeah, man, let's get into it. So he turned up on me. Nigga, we've been player and cordial all up to that point. So I don't know who, I don't know nobody name in the room, no nothing, homie. So when we do the interview, get the interview done. See, we take a picture and he disappear. Me and G Money talk for a minute, you know. That nigga disappear. So I'm saying to myself, man, did he go and go get somebody or what? Because the energy done changed, right? Oh, nigga, just go. He nigga, just go and admit that you're a hypocrite. No, nigga, I ain't no. I don't contradict myself. You trying to contradict me? So when I leave and come back home, I don't know the people in New York got a message or a post saying I said fuck New York. So a day go by, all of a sudden I got a lot of smoke in my DM and on my Instagram. From New York, nigga. So I'm like, God damn, man, what's this shit about? Yeah, nigga, come back to New York. I don't know what these niggas mad about. I'm thinking maybe I said something on the podcast to make them niggas mad. So now I got all this smoke. Nigga, fuck New York. Nigga, I was just in New York. Nigga, fuck wrong with you, nigga. So that's where that went. Unbeknownst to me, the guy Flip made a post saying that I said fuck New York, right? With a clip. Of, of of me on the podcast. So that's where all the smoke came from, from New York. So I ain't never had a problem with the nigga. Okay, now, Haas, I seen that you, I seen, you know, we seen that Flip had, y'all had some type of, um, some shit going on a couple of weeks ago. You mind going into detail what, what, what that was about? I mean, like, they was talking about some own celebrity boxing match and see, my, my whole thing is like this, right? I didn't realize that they was really, really trying to put dudes in the ring. Where I come from, if you a dude of my caliber, you know, dudes don't just throw your name around saying, yo, I'm going to put you to fight this neighbor. It's like that just don't happen. It's like 
it, it, it's like Lavi Hoover. Where I come from, I am a Lavi Hoover. In, in, in my day, my time, my ever, I'm just that strong. And it's like when you got internet niggas talking about, oh yeah, we gonna could we gonna put this one against that nigga. It's like my whole thing is for any of them. Who who the fuck do you think you are to even play with my name like that? So mm-hmm. then when I seen the video with JoJo, oh, Capone, gosh, you know that's a pretty broad statement, my guy. Compare yourself to Hoover now. You got to understand something, right? <laughs> if you if you pay attention to me and, I, and me being on this internet, everybody that I clash with is a heavy hitter. Like I don't I don't beef with dudes that soft. I don't like arguing with dudes. I, everybody that I got a problem with. That's why dudes be saying, well, keep that same energy. Oh, when we see this dude, like, for example, I, I seen, I ain't going to even mention the name because some, some things is just going to be handled in the street. But I see, you know, two dudes on the Internet talking about, oh, we ain't going to say no names or whatever the case may be. But, the, you know, the, 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 the cats be talking about, and it was, you know, one of them was my son, as a matter of fact, right? Dudes be talking until they run into you. First and foremost, like, I've ran into my son before. You see what I'm saying? I even spoke to him on the phone. We're not the same caliber of dude. My type, my son is the type of dude that he'll knuckle up and fight you, depending on who you are. I'm the type of dude that if you're not moving right or you step in, you you step in my path, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna clap you. And dudes get this internet blogging shit a little fucked up. I've been in jail for murder three times, attempted murders. I'm not going to. I'm forty. I'm forty four years old. I'm not wrestling outside with nobody. So when you start throwing my name around on the internet and you talking about, oh yeah, because I saw we gonna put them to fight this one and this one gonna fight her. Like, hold up, who the fuck is you to tell me who I'm gonna fight? A lot of these dudes hmm. on the internet, including Qu- Queens Flip, I don't. There's not a problem with me with these dudes when we're face to face. Just like with the Sarnetta nigga, there wasn't a problem with me and his cousin Shaft or Marky. When we was face to face, the problem came when they decided to get home. Then you see the arguing. When I'm they niggas' faces, all that talking and I'll do this and I'll do that, you're not going to see that happen when dudes is in my face. Because it's either put up or shut up. You see what I'm saying? Outside of that, it is what it is, man. Uh, the internet gave a lot of people the opportunity to be who they pretend. It's, it's like you could be who, or you could be anybody on the internet. Anybody yeah. can be, you could be anybody on the internet, but in real life, the one thing I would say, I don't care, I like, like from Jim Jones, I done came at Jim Jones and all the dip, them dips, everybody, all the gangs, I done addressed all the gangs around America. When you see her song Campbell outside, you know, when they tell you he's never outside, but then you see me outside in the projects. When you see me outside, there's no entourage. I don't have 20 niggas around me. I'm always by myself prepared for whatever. And that's the difference. These dudes that be beefing with me or the celebrities or whatever, every time you see them, it's 20 niggas with them. If you look at me on YouTube right now, I'm just as big as them. I get better numbers than them. Look at any rapper that's on YouTube right now that decided, okay, this pandemic them broke their pockets. So before they was too good for YouTube and they was too good to correspond back and forth with you on IG. Now they got, everybody got a podcast. Look at their numbers. Look at my numbers. I'm killing the game right now. So it's like, okay, when I go outside, my celebrity status is bigger than yours now. And I'm by myself. That's all I that's that's all I'm saying. So for all the dudes that be sitting up there talking, you know, what you gonna do when you run into such and such, may the best man win. And life is all about who get to their shit first. That's it. Now look, let me ask you this, Charleston. Now I see that you recently you um you posted a screenshot that you have a Vlad T V interview coming up. Yeah, and I yeah, want to congratulate on you for getting up your internet celebrity so fast. And you got, the, you know, the major platforms reaching out. Now, you know, a lot of people say, you know, Vlad is a culture vulture. Vlad is not from the culture. You from the culture. Hassan yeah. is from the culture. Yeah. I'm from the culture. Yeah. Now, do you think that he might be trying to align himself with you because of the things that you might have said about the Nation of Islam and things like that? Recently, you on fire, hot as fish grease, trying to align himself with you because he's in a decline because of the quote unquote cancel culture and everybody's been on his body for the statements that he made about Farrakhan. Now that he sees you made some disparaging remarks, trying to align himself with you to make you the scapegoat for the backlash that he's been catching. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna fuck with him. If that's what he wanna do, yeah, I'm with it. Uh, I don't give a fuck about the culture. Fuck the culture. Nigga, what does the culture do for the black children? Nothing. So fuck the culture. Nigga, I don't give a fuck about the culture. Instagram is a culture vulture. Nigga, they make damn near trillions of dollars just off us having an Instagram account. YouTube is a culture vulture. Facebook is a culture vulture. Uh, uh, Robert Kraft is a culture vulture when he went and got Meek Mills out the motherfucking jail. Everything is a culture vulture. Nike, Colin Kaepernick, Tyler Perry was a culture vulture. He dressed like our grandmothers. So now all of a sudden, you niggas, I, I got a hundred niggas saying, don't get on Vlad TV. Why couldn't you niggas give me no advice when I needed to get my YouTube account monetized? Why couldn't nobody get me here? No, I was waiting to talk to you tonight, and I was going to say that to you. I, the, yo, I swear to God, I was waiting before this show was over. I was going to tell you, I got on YouTube. For two years, I was on YouTube. I was on Sinetta platform. I was on Doggy Diamond's platform. I was on Star's platform. I was on everybody's platform on YouTube. Nobody took the time out to tell me for two years that I could get my page monetized. And that came through an enemy. Mine, I you just got check, mine two weeks ago. You can check our track with you. Anybody so, that we've dealt with on InfoMinds, anybody, we helped them with their YouTube. Anything that they got going on, we support them. I don't know any other platform that promotes oh, their guests and promotes what their guests got going on more than us. Because we ain't looking to be the celebrities. You got a lot of these internet guys that they looking to be famous. Maybe they, they wanted to rap one time and they didn't hit it. So maybe this internet, they could be as famous yeah. as they rap career that they never was able to achieve. Like we ain't into that. We let our work speak for us. We let our project speak for us. Man, I, you know I, I, I mean? I'm, glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad you made note of that, homie, because you're not just taking us and, and getting our views. You're uplifting your brother. You saying, hey, do you got this in order? So I appreciate that. And I just want to say this. It's the guy, the white dude by the name of Big Matt. Done time in prison. We call him a real stick of wood. I ain't never met him. He's mm. in Florida, but he got this platform called White Boy Lockdown Production. He called me and said, say, I've done the figures on possibly what YouTube has paid out under your name with all these people who have stole your inf I didn't know that, homie. Nigga, I could have got a hundred thousand dollars last year, many videos that were being put up on YouTube getting all them views. No, the culture didn't tell me that. A white boy, hmm. a white dude, homie. And I hurry up and send him some money. Nigga, you gave me some game. Let me just say this about Vlad. When when the Dallas Cowboys play each other. And the New England Patriots pay each other. They got a game plan, and they got a game plan. Bill right. Belichick really don't worry about what the offensive plan is of the Dallas Cowboys or their defensive scheme. He know he got some players that he go coach. Vlad may have whatever intention, homie. Remember, I'm showing up with some game. I have a mission, too. So a fair exchange is not a robbery. Right. You see what I'm what? saying? So what? that yeah, platform, yeah. What's your, what's your, so, on. what's your take on it, Haas? What you think? What's your opinion from your perspective? Same My question. Like this. At the end of the day, man, you know, people like to play monkey see, monkey do. Me personally, I don't, I don't like a lot of people, black or white, in this <laughs> industry. You see what I'm saying? So when you sit up there and everybody sit up there talking about Vlad, I don't like Puff neither. I think Puff is the most disgusting thing that happened to hip hop. One of the most disgusting things. I think. I think. I think that you know people want to focus on Vlad and and, and him being a, a, a cop or whatever the case may be. But the reality of it is, real gangsters with brains don't get up on Vlad and tell Vlad the white guy. The man you telling Massa all of your criminal activities. Who the fuck does that? A dumb nigga. Only a dumb nigga gets on Vlad and say, yeah, you know I'm saying, yeah, you know I clap that nigga over here and now the feds knocking on you. Only a dumb, you deserve everything you get when you go on Vlad. Which, what Vlad is, is somebody that has a platform, you say, okay, he has X amount of millions of people that's going to hear my story. You go on there, you do what you got to do, you get out. And that's the bottom line to that. Because the reality of it is, what's the difference? Like he said, what is the difference between Vlad and all these other, like, 
what, 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 what Instagram is doing right now, the way they gave up all the information or, 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 or casting over two times and the feds got him locked up, nobody, but all these real niggas don't want to get off of Instagram. Now, of speaking of that, that, speaking of what you just said, now, in 2020, just for both of y'all, in 2020, we saw so many rappers catch cases. Casanova caught a Rico charge. What's the um, dude? G Herbo um, charged with, 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 with fraud. A Boogie, YFN Lucci, you know what I mean? All these guys, Wayne. You know, the baby, Tory Lanez, Megan Thee Stallion, all this shit. Now, Charleston how come? White. Charleston White. Charleston yeah. White. Charleston White. I, I'm, out case? On, I'm, out, I'm out on three bars right now, homie, because some niggas come to the hood on some live shit. I'm on live, and, and, and I jumped out the bushes with some guns. Uh, the police, I'm on live with my gun. Uh, them gangster niggas, somehow, I ended up the only nigga going to jail. But we all had guns. Now, how come we rarely see, like, we don't see this in other communities. Other demographics don't do this. Like, a pop, the pop stars, you don't see pop stars going to jail, gunning each other down on freeways. You don't see NSYNC and all them type of motherfuckers. You never heard of them doing no type of shit like that. You know what I mean? Why, yeah. why, why do we get caught so caught up in that, man? And the I need culture, both of y'all, both of y'all. That, 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 that culture. That y'all think people say, y'all say they're culture vultures. No, they're not. Nobody's mimicking our culture, homie. They just like the music. Nobody's dibbling and dabbling in our culture. The culture says, I need a gun for my black brother. The, the music, the culture. So we don't know how to settle any other disagreements other than fighting and shooting. We don't have any conflict resolution. And we have a lot of conflict. We fight over who like the Cowboys and who like the Eagles. So, nigga, we fight over, nigga, who better, Michael Jordan or LeBron? So it's the culture that we so call love and everything about the culture is negative, destructive, and detrimental. Everything about the culture. Do you think that, um, do y'all think that it's a war on hip hop? Are rappers just dumb and getting involved, just dumb for getting involved in criminal cases? Or do y'all think that hip hop is being deliberately targeted because hip -hop of- Hip hop is a war on the, hip hop has war on the people. Hip hop is the war on the people. Actually, they hip hop the is that. They have, they have, ways, they have ways, psychological war on the people, homie. Hip hop, hip -hop is a tool, it's a tool now. Of white supremacy, it's an extension of of, of a demonic force of, of evilness, homie. It's 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 why would why would the powers to be wage war on something that that works just as well as lynching? Why would they wage war on that, man? It's a well all machine that fuels not just the prison system, the funeral homes, man, uh, black genocide, uh, man, it fuels everything negatively, negative statistically that governs us. Why would they wage a war on that? Exactly. And see, what you got to understand is, like, when you sit back and you really, really analyze, there's a blueprint to what's going on, right? What they're doing is, in some years to come, it's like when you watch the movie Demolition Man. They show you that it's going to come a time that this music is going to be outlawed. And the excuse for that is all of these deaths that they help create. In the near future, the future that we're going into in this new world order, like when you watch Demolition Man, when you cursed, you got, you got penalized. Well, on Facebook, if you say the wrong thing, you go to what? Facebook jail, Instagram jail, you lose your accounts. They're preparing you for the future. Hip hop right now, all the shootings, all the murders, all the messed up lyrics where, where them sitting up there talking about smoking Tuca. You smoking a 15 year old boy. He ain't even get a chance to experience life. And, and he you wasn't grown. even a rapper. He wasn't even a rapper, man. He wasn't even a gangbanger. So when you when you when you when you look at this and you say, okay, where else does this music play? Russia outlawed it. Russia, Vladimir Putin literally came out three years ago. I mean, they had a world write-up about hip-hop cannot be played in Russia because of the negative influence. It would cause an uprise. It's savagery. Notice during the George Floyd 
civil unrest, uncivil rest, whatever they call it, right? You saw young kids singing rap lyrics, fueling it. Fuck, they were saying they took the songs to the streets. The young people did during the looting and protesting. Man, if you don't think these people ain't taking note, it's psychological programming now, homie. This is psychological warfare that has been waged on black children. They have literally taken the parental advisory out of this shit. How we combat that? How do we combat the war that has been waged on the minds of black youth when there's no filter for this shit? It ain't no more radio songs. How do we combat it? And, and nobody's attacking the root cause of it, which are the rappers, nigga. They write this shit. Now, we most we recently lost rappers like Mo3 to gun violence, Pop Smoke, FBG Duck, King Vaughn, so many more. I, I can't even count them. I can't even keep hey, up man. with it. So many, man. We ain't never Is seen gun it violence like becoming a growing problem within rap because we, we a little bit older. But, it, but we've been rapping about guns since the 90s, man, from everybody, from east to west to down south, we've been rapping about guns. But what do y'all think is the difference now? The difference now is, is that when you come from the early 70s, 80s, 90s, you was raised by somebody that was raised by somebody that still had some type of principles, even though their principles, like the code, the code of the street always been a piece of shit. And this, and this is the one thing that I've, I've bring, but, at, but yet still, you still had some type of discipline and, 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 and strength. Now it's just brute ignorance. The criminals back in the days used to be smart. These niggas are ignorant. The criminals back in the days, some of them, some of them, <sighs> Had, uh, had had a little bit of discipline, had a little bit of morals and principles about what they did and how they did it. Like that's why they said the game is to be sold and not told. Back in the days, coming up in hip hop, the drug dealers, the rappers wanted to be like the drug dealers, and and the rappers used to diss the drug dealers. Though they used to hang out with them, but they used to diss it in the music. Now it's like anything, everything coming through the speaker. Is pure evil. The dudes that's running the street right now have no sense of direction, absolutely none, no sense of direction. So it's like that 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 that. Let's let's say for example, right, with Big Meech. When you had dudes of Big Meech caliber, you had Larry Hoover caliber. You had strong dudes, and you still had lieutenants and generals that still ran the streets. At some point in time, the federal government came through black neighborhoods. And started like it was like the slave master came and invaded all over again and snatched up this generation, this generation, this generation. So much back to back, especially in New York, to where that there's nobody actually to look up no more to say, all right, I'm mimicking and I'm following in these footsteps. So now you got these little dudes out here. The music is demonic. So the energy is demonic. And they're claiming demon time. And in this world, people got to understand words are spells. You can will and think and speak and cast a spell on yourself. And this is what the music is doing. Look, C. Dolores Tucker, she wants to declare the war on gangster rap, right? Now, war which she ended up losing, of course. Now, because you had guys like Uncle Luke that went to war for the parental advisory, actually went to jail for rap music and, and, and for you to be able to say what you wanted to say in music. Now, do you think that gangster rap is detrimental to the youth? And I know that question is probably, I probably can answer it for you, but I, I want to pose it to you guys anyway. I think I think at this point in time- Do I think it's detrimental to the youth? Yeah, 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 we're gonna start with you, Charleston. Yeah, do you uh, think that hip hop is detrimental to the youth? Uh, uh, Confucius once said, man, he who controls images controls mind. So why are all the images gangster? Well, it ain't no more uh, Houdini kind of guys. It ain't no more uh, Fresh Prince Bel Air kind of guys. Uh, it ain't no more Tone Loke kind of guys. Uh, it ain't no more. Uh, it ain't no more comical rap. It ain't no more fly guy rap. Everything is kill, 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 kill. So when you think about 
those that's controlling the images that's coming through the video, uh, all rappers have the same image, right? They go get the gold teeth, they go get the change, and they put the guns in the video. They're, you don't even, they don't, there's no such thing as a video victim no more. So all you got in videos now mm. is sticks and dicks. Sticks mm. and dicks. Nigga, there ain't no more, no more video victims, huh? So uh, even even if, if, if the girls are in the video, the girl got the gun. So, uh, man, everything about what the hip hop culture, rap music, and gangster rap have evolved to is done went away from storytelling and talking about the struggle of the black community to nothing but pure music to propagate murder. The music industry is genocide right now. The music industry is, 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 is like a nuclear bomb to the black community. It's, 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 it's straight genocide. And it's, it's premeditated pre murder. It's premeditated murder. See, it's, 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 it's deeper than rap, right? Because right now in hip hop, for the first time in hip hop, like, like damn near everything on top is black. And not one of these, not, not, not near one of these, um, these sellout ass niggas, not Jay-Z, not um, not Jay Prince, not um, Rick Ross, like all these dudes that got their own labels. Nobody came to the forefront and sat up there and said, you know what? We lost Nipsey Hussle. That murder was on tape. Duke kicked him in his head like a he filled gold his ass. FBG duck wobbling all over the floor. Bullets riddled in his body. The police let him bleed out. King Vaughn, picture all over the internet. You see him getting shot. He gets to the, 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 the hospital. He's dead. You see his body. Like they got his 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 own. Say man, we ain't copy. never we, we've never had an autopsy photo leak like that, homie. That was that was heartbreaking. His autopsy all over the internet, and you gonna sad, tell me? You gonna tell me? You got all of these black billionaires, and not near one of them said, "You know what? Enough is a fuck enough." But well, uh, well, what fucked me Hassan up though? Campbell, uh, well, hold up, but 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 you to a YouTuber named Hassan Campbell get like so. I gotta get creative now. I'm doing the same thing Charleston doing. I gotta get creative now. Now it's oh, he got his TV turned off. He got his snot box rock because if I don't. Like really, really show you just how ugly and, 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 and the, the scene is. Nobody cares. And then the crazy part about it is, you know what pisses me off the most? I don't think black people realize that how much money is being dead, being made off of dead rappers. The insurance policies, man. The in say, man, these man, the 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 managers is taking the YouTube accounts. The families is being left with nothing. The mothers, the children. Man, them, man, these people is banking, banking in cash cow money off a rapper getting killed, homie. And all them niggas getting this rapper kit from cash money, which you can't rent a car with. You can't pay for the hotel with cash money. That's why all them niggas get cash money, a gold chain, and lease cars, and they dead soon. The sad part about it is, is like when you sit back and you really analyze this, if they not getting murdered, they straight junkies. And some of these young, they young boys at that. And none of these labels are set up where they got rehabs or anything to get these young boys back on track. They watching these dudes go to early graves and sitting back and not saying nothing. It, 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 it's, it's, it's just disturbing. But it seems like you know, it's more profitable. It's more profitable to them if they, if they, you know, they, they cashing in the insurance policies, taking over the YouTube accounts after they pass, taking over the Vimo accounts. Uh, everything that they had involved musically, so the parents are left to beg and plead with these labels to to give them to throw them a bone, which is fucked up. You know what I'm saying? But now look, I'm gonna change the subject a little bit. Now look, you seen that um the Rock Nation CEO Desiree Perez right there? She got pardoned by President Trump. That's the major news. Former drug dealer, former DEA informant. Now there's a number of artists who have Rock Nations, like you know um, Meek. Um, a lot of artists over there at, um, at Rock Nation were very vocal about 6 ix 9 and, and, and hating people that sold and cooperated. But you, nobody has nobody from the hip hop community has came out and said anything about Miss Perez. Now, are these guys hypocrites or what, what do you got? What's your take on that? A hypocrite is an understatement. I mean, the reality of it is, is that even when it comes to Jay-Z, Jay-Z, Taught Jay Z 
was detrimental to the rap game because Jay-Z made it popular to sell drugs. Jay-Z made it popular. He was the first rapper to really, really, like he was like the billboard, like the Scarface movie of selling drugs through, through, through rapping. And for him to turn around and to hire a female that took down two drug cartels, talking about, and, 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 and Funk Master Fleck, Funky, Funky Ohm, that build a bitch ass nigga, He's sitting up there talking about Desiree for Desiree Perez is a um a civilian. Nah, she's not a civilian. She's a she's a federal agent. And for Jay Z to hire her after selling drugs through lyrics and selling drugs through the streets, and and turn around, he's a hypocrite to everything that he says he stands for. Everything, and not just him though. Meek Mills, Benny the Butcher, and all the rest of them other dudes that got a problem with Takashi Six Nine. But you gotta you you cool with this chick sitting up there. Uh, 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 pretty much giving you orders on that label when you know she's an informant and all of these dudes was drug dealers or, 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 or gang bangers. It's hypocrisy. That's why That's why you need to throw the, the, the street code and the streets throw that shit in the garbage too. Yeah, Maybe they're using the street code. Too. The street code attend, you know, they were expected to, to hold the youth to the street codes and when it comes to getting a check from them, from these, from, from these, from these big ass corporations and these companies, they throwing the code out the window. They motherfucker selves. Well, do 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 we do we ever get to do we ever get to grow away from the code? Do I am I bound by the if, if I get in if I get in the streets as a little boy out of my pain for my father and my, and my undeveloped brain and, and my low self esteem issues and I go to the streets right and then I meet a wife and I start having children and and, and I become a father. And do at any point do I get to say, okay, I, I'm I'm not governed by the street codes anymore. I, I want to be a regular civilian. And if my house get broken too, and I know it's the little niggas around the corner, instead of killing the little nigga, I just call the police so I can file on my insurance. So, homie, these niggas is propagating bullshit to our children, and our children, kids like me, who believe Ice Cube was a real gangster, who believe Dr. Dre was a real gangster, who believe Ren and Eve was real gangsters and they would kill people, homie. I acted out those lyrics believing that that imagery that them niggas sold to me was real. And I literally was heartbroken. Nigga, yeah, when I found out one. Tupac. I was, I was heartbroken <laughs> when I found out Tupac didn't say a dope and, and, and them niggas wasn't no real gangsters, homie. I felt betrayed. I felt betrayed, homie, because I almost threw my life away. But I was grown before I realized that, my nigga. And I was ashamed. So a lot of what you see now, nigga, is the resentment of being tricked as a kid. And you niggas still carrying this shit on? Nah. I got a hypothetical question. I got a hypothetical question for y'all, right? Now, the rapper Casanova is looking at 25 years to life for the Rico and, and the gun charge and all that. Hopefully, he, he's able to get around it. Now, if you was in this position with a wife, kids successful career, houses, money, all the shit that you dream about while you in the prison, he had obtained. Now, if you were, if you, if, do you think that if you were offered a deal, would he take it or would he go to trial knowing he could be in prison for the, potentially the next two decades? Because he always spoke about people saying about people cooperating, but they always talk about that shit about cooperating because they haven't been put in that position yet. So now he's put in the same position that 6 9 was put in. He's put in the same position that everybody else that has cooperated has been put in. And the track record of guys standing up and the track record of guys cooperating, it don't really even up. So what y'all think? What, what do y'all think that he's going to do with this time he, he's facing? Well, the truth of the matter is, is that now that they denied him his bail, he has a decision to make, whether he stand tall or he fold. Here's the reality of it. If he tell it's not going to work out the same way it worked out for Takashi 6 9 because he's supposed to be a, 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 an official, uh, he's supposed to be a goon, for real. So looking at that gorilla-ass looking nigga, that Magilla gorilla, strong-ass, ape-ass nigga, he an ape, telling and folding on his crew, it's not going to work out for him. And he might as well stand there. It's the, do your time, nigga. You did the crime, do your time. Stand tall with your crew. Stand tall. Personally, I don't think he's going to tell. I don't think he's going to tell. Because the reality of it is the way the feds got them is like, okay, he got to come with something big now. So he ain't going to be able to hide it. The whole thing about it is they want to humiliate him. They want to break him. 
He ain't going to secretly snitch and get his way out of that. Now nah, he got to officially tell and bring some cats down. And it's like, and once he do that, where do you go from there? Back to the hood? Because the the, the record labels can't ain't going to be able to do nothing with him. He ain't going to be able to sell. He was barely selling records anyway. He wasn't a top artist. He was just getting a couple of shows. Shows is over right now. The, the, the COVID then killed all the shows. So it's like, where do you go? Now you got to go back to the hood on the same niggas that you done told on? His be- the best thing that he that, that he could do is just hope that they give him mercy and, and, and do his time. His career is over with. It's done. Yo, Charleston, what you think? If you're familiar with the situation, what you think? Uh, say, say, homie, uh, I think he gonna do what most niggas try to do. Try to stand tall. But even for those that stand tall, they gonna try to break it. They gonna give you enough time where when they come back and talk to you in a year from now, you gonna be ready to tell. Because while you gone, while you, while you standing tall, it's gonna be a, one of your partners gonna go fuck one of them hoes you really love. Uh, they gonna stop writing you. They gonna stop talking. So when the feds come back to you a year later, six months later, you gonna have some information this time. So they know how it go, homie. They know us. They made us. They created. They, Willie Lynch doctrine was believed to be a scientific method. It just wasn't no process. It was a motherfucking scientific method, right? And and we see how good their scientists are. So they know the uh, how we behave. They know what circumstances and situations to put us in to make us respond how they want us to respond. They're that crafty with us. With us. So, homie... Most criminals are no different than any other criminal, homie. So he gonna try to play tough in the beginning, but they know how to play. Now, Charleston, in your opinion, does New York and the East Coast respect Texas and vice versa? Does Texas uh, respect the East Coast? Because of, you know, the real niggas, people gonna hold me to the fire about some of the things. So I wanna make sure I ask you the shit that they want to We're gonna clear this up now, homie. Okay. Real respect real in Alaska, in Hawaii, no matter where you at, right? There's some healing that needs to take place because we don't understand each other's culture. So over time, we said, fuck them Texas niggas. Or we done said, fuck them New York niggas. Over time, because of our lack of ignorance of New York culture. Homie, I was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed coming to New York, homie. I put myself in danger to come to New York. Uh, how so? All right, so, nigga, I come to understand the culture, right? The only thing I can think about is Brooklyn in the house. Nigga, I went to Brooklyn to understand the culture. So I got my feelings hurt, huh? Mm. I got my I, I felt betrayed, nigga. So I felt like, okay, man, them nigga really tried to make a play on me. So in response, man, fuck that shit. But nah, homie, I believe real niggas in New York respect real niggas in Texas. I believe real niggas in Texas respect real niggas in New York. That's right. I believe that's all over this country, homie. And we make this shit right, homie. That's why I'm glad you did this shit the way you did it and didn't let the narrative play out how the fake niggas wanted to play out. Real niggas know, come on, homie, that nigga got, they saw yeah, the because, situation. Because, oh, bro, let me tell you something. The, the temperature that was being set, man, and the way these dudes, see, these guys, a lot of them been on the internet. They might know some street people, but half of these guys ain't really been in the street really took losses, really been through this shit and understand how this internet shit could really spiral into a motherfucker getting hurt, man. Hey, homie, and that's what you really hurt me, homie. So that's about why that. I said, look, we need to do this to put some water on it because it ain't about us as the YouTubers and the bloggers. It's about the little niggas that's on the corner with nothing to do with a big ass pistol on their waist and they ready to throw it, they ready to risk it all over some shit on the internet. Hey, homie, that's this what we try to stop. I'm not- I'm not an entertainment dude, homie. I'm new to this shit. So when a nigga get me up there, I'm coming as community activist, right? To show the real me. So I see he wants the internet guy. I'm not knowing when I peep he's an internet nigga, I call him what he was. But I'm saying, homie, why would you get me up here? And I'm telling you, I work with kids in the community. Why would you get me up here to do me like that, homie? Come seek the truth. Don't try to do me like this. So... Nah, homie, that, that fucked me up, my nigga. So then when I found out this nigga wasn't a street guy, why would he be pressing street laws and street ethics on the culture? I don't know, man. Kids? I don't know. I don't know Flip personally. 
You know what I mean? So I, I don't know if he's a street guy or, or what kind of guy he well, is. Well, he I don't told know. me he was. But, he said it himself. But my thing is, hopefully, as brothers, just to make an example, hopefully y'all, as time move on, you know, time heal the wounds, and y'all will be able to revisit the situation and make some light of it and be able to move on on, on, on a positive note. You know what I mean? Whenever y'all cross gonna say, that bridge. I'm going to say this as a black man. Uh, hey, homie, every day I wake up to right or wrong. Uh, I wake up to grow and I wake up to evolve, right? And so uh, if I'm trying to grow uh, at some point, I got to get past what I feel about how that situation happened. Uh, at some point, That's right. uh, homie, uh, if the niggas in New York is trying to grow, uh, they got to get past what Charleston said that made them feel like that, homie. Because at the end of the day, nigga, we trying to grow. I know I am. That's a fact. That's a fact, man. Yo, Hassan, do you feel that New York looks down on the South and the West? And do you feel that that's a bad rep that we got? Just people taking, sometimes they might take the confidence of a New Yorker for arrogance. Well, I think, honestly speaking, I think ever since like 50 Cent destroyed New York hip hop, New York ain't been doing nothing but trying to own pretty much appeal to the South. Like New York has been copying the South style of rapping until recently. Now, it, 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 now it's Chicago with the drill music. But outside of that, you know, New York pretty much been paying homage to the South for a little minute now. We ain't even been coming with our own style of music. We was coming with their style of music. But my whole thing is, I'm going to be honest with you, for me, it's like, I don't even look at, I'm, yo, me personally, I'm sick and tired of New York, period. I'm sick and tired of the mentality in New York, Chicago, LA, whatever. I'm tired of the nigga mentality. And everywhere you go where black people is at, there's a nigga mentality. I'm sick of that shit. I'm sick of the real nigga mentality. I'm sick of us looking at each other through the eyes of the slave master. We got the blood of the slave, the slave master in us. So when we looking at each other, we see through the eyes of the slave master. And that's how we treat each other. We don't give a fuck about New York. Chicago don't give a fuck about Chicago. South Carolina don't give a fuck about South Carolina. There's Southern hospitality that went out the window. I got people that live in Atlanta. That's, yo, they want some escape shit. They want to get the fuck out. They can't go to the gas station without getting carjacked. Who the fuck want to live like that? So when, when you sit back and you analyze and, well, well, how do New York feel about this one? Like, we hate each other wherever, wherever we at. If there's a real nigga there, I don't want to go. When niggas be sitting up there talking about your highs, you can't come to Chicago, bitch, nigga, I don't want to go. If I got to get over there and we going to smoke Tuca, I don't want to go. I don't want to I don't want to smoke a 15-year-old boy. I don't want to go nowhere where any nigga feel like that shit is right. I don't want to be around any nigga that feel like because a little boy, mama told him to tell on the person who killed his friend that he was 13 years old, if you agree with that shit, nigga, I don't want to be nowhere around you. I don't want no parts of you. Let me build my own community by my own land and get the fuck away from you real niggas. Now, Charleston, what do you think of the New York hip hop compared to down south? And what you listening to, man? I see you running around with the Gucci hat on. You running around with the drip on and all that. Down yeah. in Miami, coordinated, color coordinated and all that. Well, who you listening to, man? When you, when you uh, riding? Who you fucking say, with, man? man uh, I, I don't, man, I don't, I don't know New York rap, right? Uh, okay. Other than what they, what they give us on the radio. Uh, okay. So I don't know no New York rappers, homie. So I went to New York to learn New York. I, I moved to California some years ago so I can go. We got the gang banging, but we really didn't learn the culture, right? So I went and moved to California to go learn the culture because I know once I understand the culture, I can really fuck with the New York niggas, right? So that's what keeps us divided is not understanding one another's culture. Uh, nigga, hip hop started in New York. Break dancing. Uh, it's the history of it, homie. I'm a, I'm a historian. Uh, nigga, I felt like I was somewhere in New York City. Nigga, nigga, I'm flying to New York. Nigga, I felt like I was somewhere, right? So it's the essence of, of accomplishment to look around, nigga, and see them big old skyscrapers. Nigga, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a feeling that come with being in New York for the first time, nigga, you done seen, you see the Statue of Liberty over there, and you, nigga, it's a feeling that come with that, my nigga, and New York niggas can't rob me of that, right? So that's the feeling I got of being in New York. I just had a bad experience, homie. 
nothing. Can't nobody take away the good, that good feeling that I had in New York. I played good times and, and Jefferson song, nigga, while I was in New York. No doubt, baby. But look, you're going to get back. You're going to get back. You know what? I hate, yo, I, I, I really, really hate that this brother came to New York and went on Queen's Flip show and it was his worst experience. Queen ship, Queen's Flip should have been a dope experience for him. You know what I mean? My, my it's experience because, Queen, you know, some people, I'm going to tell you like this, huh? some guys, they look forward to, they, they do their work, they're putting in their work, and when they start getting recognized by platforms, they feel like they, that's an accomplishment. So they're happy about that. They're proud to go there. So, of course, like like I say, man, anybody that's came to Miami, anybody that visited here, they know, man, when they come, Bosco, whoever, whoever comes to Miami and they link up with me, it's red carpet, man. We're going to make sure you eat good, smoke oh. good. We're going to so much point you in the right direction to good restaurants. I'm going to tell you what not to do. I'm going to tell you, you may not want to hang out on South Beach because they petty. You might want to take it up towards Lauderdale or whatever. I'm going I'm, to I'm point you in the right direction, man. And then I just I just wish that he could have had the experience that, that that he was looking for. I wish that, that he could have had let, that. Let me say you know this, man? homie. Uh, the, the Gucci hats, right? The, 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 the fly outfits. Um, I got I got thrust into this celebrity shit, right? So I had the stylist. So uh nigga, they wanted to put me in that shit. Nigga look fly in, in the motherfucker, but that ain't that ain't that ain't me. Homie, right? So I told him I don't need the stylist no more. Homie, that's money a nigga can keep. Uh I want to stay close to the to the niggas in the streets. Homie, my people that can't afford that shit. I got a $950 Fendi hat, homie. I wouldn't have bought that shit. My stylist nigga. My stylist them got that shit. So I get with an elder brother, Uncle Henny, and they saying, nah, homie, you the light. Don't get caught in temptation of light. So I'm seeing how our young brothers can get caught into chasing the light, homie. They take you out of the ghetto and they put you in these big houses. Nigga, you around these Rolls Royces. You got the keys to any one of these motherfucking cars. Then all of a sudden, nigga, you find out who holding the light. So I had to pull back, okay? I had to pull back. Nigga, I am the light. What the homie Hassan said, nigga, I ain't chasing out. Nigga, I'm the light. So I, I got to look out in my culture now, right? I'm in this entertainment spotlight. I got to look out in my culture, and I need to be somebody, homie. I need a blueprint. I need a model because I ain't never been in this. I ain't never been here before. So guess who I grabbed on to, homie? I grabbed Dick Gregory. I'm studying Dick. I ain't trying to be Jay-Z. I ain't trying to be Puffy. Nigga, my people need something other than them niggas. So, nigga, I had, I, I had to grab on to the ideology of who Dick Gregory is to black people, homie. So, I ain't in no Gucci no more, nigga. I ain't going to go get the hair cut every weekend now. Nigga, I ain't in my, I ain't in my BMW. I ain't in my Benz. I'm in my raggedy truck riding around. So, I don't lose connection with the people who got me here, homie. The community. So I know that you I know to get on Vlad TV and use my platform to talk about brain development of children. Cause I know a young nigga go catch a murder case and that information needs to be put out there. I got youth program, the father to father program that we can institute from city to city. So I know to get on the programs and no matter what they plan is, I gotta stick with this plan and get that gospel out. Hi, tell the people what you're working on. Tell the people what you got coming up. Tell the people where they could find you. Like I said, if they've been under a rock, but just let them know what you got going, man, and, and, and you know where they could find you at. Well, you know what I mean. As far as like what I learned, you can't tell people what you got planned. These these wretched wretched Canavan bastards. Like everything that they think I'm about to do, they try to sabotage my plan. Like you already see what they did with my Instagram, and I laugh. I'm like, damn, you know. I, I don't make money off Instagram. I make money off of YouTube. So destroying the Instagram, it was like, what was the point? So now you don't help me build up Facebook groups. You know what I mean? If you make me weak in one area, I get strong in other areas. Thank you. You see what I'm saying? They, they teaching me a valuable lesson. These haters are dangerous. You can't tell, you can never tell people what, what you got planned until, you own, until you're ready to execute that plan because they will sabotage it. I'm and learning that. Too. I'm learning yeah. that. I'm definitely no, they, learning they, that. Can find, I can't even say you can find me on Instagram on 
I had to. I can't even use my name no more because now they got it on Instagram. If I use Hassan Campbell, they they say I'm, I'm impersonating myself, and that's what they flagging it under. So now somebody else has control of my name on Instagram. So I say I'm Poppy from Bronx River. That's my Instagram page. But when it's, as soon as I get it, my numbers up a little bit higher. They're gonna flag that down as if I care. So now I learned to work my community guidelines on YouTube. I don't need Instagram. I could post a selfie up and write something right in my community guidelines on YouTube. So, you know what I mean? Find me right on YouTube, Hassan Campbell. You know, it, it is what it is, man. Awesome. What about what about yourself, homie? What you got going on, man? What you working on? Oh, what can we man. expect, man? Oh, man, you know, I just, they just announced it, man, that, you know, I just got a Gangster Chronicle South podcast, man. So I'm the host on there with, with, with Anthony Dewberry and Uncle Henny. Uh, Man, I got a, I got some shows coming up in April, so I'm booked for like a, 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 a. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I got a little old comedy tour coming up. Uh, of course, the YouTube channel, man, is jumping. Uh, the official Charles fight. I got, a got a book coming, man. Uh, but mainly, homie, uh, I'm, 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 I'm helping to create youth programs and, and youth engagement programs and father to father programs to help deal with what the brother Hassan talked about, the core and the root issues of our problems, homie, that absent father, that single mother that's having to deal with all those issues by herself on top of her mental issues and emotional uh, problems and psychological trauma that she uh, uh, has untreated. So it, it is the, the, the internet entertainment shit, homie, is fun, is bringing in money, but nigga, I ain't lost focus and sight of uh, making sure our people can get the resources and alternatives that I'm connected to. So, Nigga, that's what I'm playing for. Alternatives and resources to bring back to the community. That's a fact, man. Now, I'm going to ask you both this, man, because both of you guys are going to experience this. I'm pretty sure, Charleston, you're going through it. Hassan, you've been through it. It still could be kind of new to Charleston. But people that just wake up every day, they hold agendas just to hate on what you got going on. They create these false realities for themselves. And they, they hold main objective of their day of their existence is just hating and trying to tear down a motherfucker that for, for no reason. I, I used don't understand that about us. Because I don't really I used, see white folks doing that to each other. I used to think uh, when I used to see articles on Facebook where I would see an 11 year old kid was found hanging due to suicide because they were cyber bullied. And I used to say, man, hey, uh, nah, that's bullshit. I didn't understand it, homie. I see how this poison can push somebody on my end if they if they insecure, if they have problems. Uh, nigga, you got to be secure to be in this spotlight and come to this internet. You have to be secure in in who you are. You have to be solid in your in in, in your psyche. You have to have a, a, an emotional stability in in, in 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 how you move, homie. Oh, uh, because these people is under a constant attack. And nigga, uh, I love it because I know how to take it and turn it into fuel. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I'm going to use your hate as fuel to, to or for this positivity we got going yeah. on. Because I know oh, you man. would wish to be here. I know you would love to be in this position to do whatever you would want to do. So you kind of hate that I'm here and you're not. So, yeah, I know that. <laughs> Yo, Haas, what's your take, homie? What you think? Well, you know what? It, it, it's like at before, it used to drive me crazy. I'd be like, everything, I'm going to kill you. Remember, in my early days, I was threatening people on the internet to the feds came to my house. Now I well, sit that, back and I... I now so I yeah, that, back, that'll learn you. <laughs> yeah. Now I sit back and I laugh. I, and I, and I, you know what? It, it, it's, it's how they say heavy, heavy it is, the head that wears the crown. Like, here it is. I was a dude that was coming on everybody else's platform looking to tell my story. Now I surpassed everybody's platform that I came on. So when I sit back and I analyze it, it's like, yo, you know, at the end of the day, everything comes with a price. There's people sitting there and they watching and they want to be in my shoes right now. So they're going to keep on throwing dots and throwing dots. And I'm sitting up there like, you know, you as long as I know they coming at me and they making 30 or 40 different videos about me a day, I'm winning. I'm winning. No question, no question. But like we always say, man, peace and one love from the Info Minds and For the Culture family. I want to thank my brother Hassan Campbell. I also want to thank the brother Charleston White for stopping by and blessing us with their time. 
You already know, man. I appreciate you, man. Salute, man. Be safe, man.